Hi, I'm Callie, a junior at Iowa State in the Apparel Events and Hospitality Management Program. I will be presenting a study that compares cultural orientations being individualism and collectivism's impacts on upbringing and value shaping of an individual within the Chinese and American cultures and the effect cultural orientation has towards an individual's relationship with themselves and others. With this, I hope to create awareness and understanding of the differences in cultural values and ideals, which is shaped by the underlying foundation of the collectivistic nature of the Chinese and the individualistic nature of Americans. The purpose of this study is to examine the collectivistic versus individualistic cultures of China and the United States, along with the impact the two different orientations have on each country and their individuals, regarding status and hierarchy, ethics, politics, economics, and education. The significance of this study is to minimize misunderstandings between Chinese and American culture and individuals by recognizing and understanding the differences between the two orientations, as well as providing information and supporting details to challenge the stereotypic notion of a collectivism among the Chinese today and highlight the changing patterns of collectivism and individualism in younger Chinese generations. The first topic of this study will compare the differences between status and hierarchy perceived by each country and how this shapes an individual's values. The United States has created a culture where everyone has an equal standing and opportunity within society and one can act, say, and express opinions and emotions relatively freely. However, in Chinese culture, equality is perceived within social rank, and individuals are to act according to rank, not necessarily by emotion or out of self-expression. I think it is an important aspect of cultural value systems to understand because it plays a large role in forming the behaviors surrounding commonplace social interactions. On a college campus, it is important to understand these differences because student approaches to things like addressing teachers, socializing with peers in class, verbalizing opinions, and many other classroom behaviors that seem typical to one student may not be so typical to another. Another co critical cultural difference is in the Western emphasis of the individual. Particularly, people are more defined by what they've accomplished directly as an individual, whereas the Chinese perspective holds that an individual is defined by his or her relationship to the group, Thus, people essentially do not exist completely independently of one another. This difference has turned out to play an important role in self-expression and specifically goal orientation. In America, individual expression is encouraged from an early age and culturally reinforced, while the Chinese have been culturally conditioned to suppress their own personal needs to think in terms of collective responsibility. How an individual is perceived within society can shape how they act and their relationships with one another. These differing views between individual and collectivist societies lends to my next discussion on the ethical approaches between the two countries. The United States Western view of ethics is based around the individual, with the main goal of society to protect its individual members. In contrast, Upholding a stable and harmonious society is of highest importance within the Chinese approach to ethics. Similarly, to the cultural viewpoints on status, differences in ethics within the societies can be easily exemplified by examining an individual's goals. In the individualistic culture, it will likely be an individual pursuit, whereas in the collectivist culture, individual goals may still be a solo pursuit However, the goal is usually geared towards contributing to the larger community's efforts. Additionally, Americans are given unhindered opportunities to pursue life, liberty, and happiness, and an individual's perceived moral obligations are to first help oneself and then help others. On the other hand, thoughts of Confucianism have had a major impact on the Chinese culture. It emphasizes a focus on the cultivation of oneself as well as respecting obligations toward others, which is expressed by two central beliefs, Ren and Yi, that have helped to meld the collectivistic Chinese culture. Ren is an individual's obligation to be altruistic and help others. Yi is a need to be righteous and aspire to have good moral disposition. 
According to Confucianism, people should be willing to sacrifice their own lives, if necessary, in, up, in order to uphold Ren and Yi. Although individualistic and collectivistic personality traits can obviously vary from person to person, the values of oneself and one's purpose are greatly shaped by ethical, cultural viewpoints. It can help to explain each country and culture's view on personal responsibility and commitment, and whether that is commitment and responsibility for oneself or for a larger commonality like family, friends, or the community. It is an important distinction to make between the two cultures because the differing goal orientations often draw differing levels of commitment. Individualistically, commitment can vary and motivation has come from within, whereas in the collectivist culture, commitment runs deeper because the commitment is to more than oneself and the burden of responsibility often accompanies greater motivation and social pressure. Ethically, it is a difference between stepping on others to achieve personal goals versus working with others to achieve personal goals. It entails differing levels of respect for others and shapes what it means to support a flourishing society. The way politics are formatted in each country is another critical comparison point shaped by cultural orientation. In the United States, an independent court system is viewed as essential for protecting the rights of individuals, going as far as protecting individuals as much as society as a whole, which is very different from a government fashioned by a collectivist culture. China's courts are not fully independent from the rest of the government, but instead views as an extension of the Communist Party. The courts work to uphold their authority and is their responsibility to maintain the status quo. While in the U.S., courts are not regarded as an extension of the government's power, rather acting as an independent check on the legislative and executive branches, which forces them to adhere to constitutional principles. These differing political approaches lead to opposing views on the power of society. The inalienable individual rights of man limit the power of society in the United States by hindering any laws that may violate these individual rights. On the other hand, the power of society in China is limited, unlimited, allowing for a government that can make any laws it wishes and enforce them upon anyone in any manner. Both systems have their downfalls. One leaves it to the individual to do the right thing, and the other leaves it to the government both of which can fall into faulty motivation and corruption in the power struggle. <clears throat> While the two countries have different views on how to run their government, there is no doubt that each has developed a very flourishing economy over the years. The United States became the world superpower and one of the world's largest economies through capitalism, a system that rewards individuals for personal innovation and development whereas China has defied theories of economic development to foster and maintain incredibly rapid economic growth by retaining strict control through a single party government. In America, the doctrine of economic individualism holds that each person should be allowed independence in making his or her own economic decisions, as opposed to upholding decisions being made by the state, the community, or one's family for him or herself. Like many previous points of comparison, economic views shaped by cultural orientation have a large impact on personal goals. At a university, the difference might be seen in career orientation, in students' choice in subject material, and commitment to studying. Generally speaking, collectivism in the field of economics holds that materials should be owned by the group or purchases should be made for the group's good over the individual's, and most decisions made must be for the benefit of all rather than just for the individual. For students, that might mean studying specified subjects rather than subjects of personal interest. The principles of collectivism and individualism prevail in the early stages of an individual's educational development, thus shaping their educational purpose, range of knowledge, and creativity from an early age. The U.S. education system believes that children are born to be able to figure things out on their own and contribute to society in their own chosen way. On the contrary, the main goal of Chinese teachers is to mold children to become responsible members of society. 
As applied to early education, American schools nourish the natural curiosity of children and do not try to mold their young minds in any particular way. Unlike the education system in China, which is geared more towards identifying career paths of children early in life. The American education system focuses on self-discovery, which nurtures creativity, but at the cost of lowering certain skill sets. In contrast, Chinese students are provided with enough resources to help them move along their predetermined career path, which provides exemplary skill development and direction, but often stifles the creativity and individuality. Tying everything together, it is easier to understand where the origins of conflict between the Chinese and American cultures stem from and how they often lead to misunderstanding and false impressions culture to culture. As shown, it is critical to dissect and understand defining roles of different cultures in order to understand that an individual's values and viewpoints are often shaped by its cultural orientation's values and effects on status and hierarchy ethics, politics, economics, and education. We can see how these differences between the individualistic viewpoints of Americans, who tend to believe everyone has equal standing and opportunity within society, versus the collectivistic approach of the Chinese, which views equality within a social rank, shapes individual behavior, ethics, goals, and values. It is an essential to understand the underlying effects behind cultural differences and dig deeper into understanding these differences rather than putting them down in order to create mutual respect and understanding in a globalizing world. As you can see, these societal ideals regarding status, ethical decisions, the economy, political views, and early education are embedded into individuals from the beginning of time and continue with each generation. Cultural values and upbringing have an enormous impact on an individual's development personally, as well as within society. In today's world, with increasing globalization and mass media, we are seeing a melding of cultures as a once collectivistic world becomes very personalized. As ideals shift, it is important to remember that the traditional Chinese culture has had a major impact on the development of collectivism among Chinese. But in a world of increasing complexity and interdependence, the differences in ideals held by the Chinese and American cultures are becoming is increasingly blended as younger Chinese generations are starting to adapt more Western values, creating a shift from emphasizing solely the collectivistic principles to supporting both the collectivistic and individualistic values. Through technology, mass media, and the internet, we are communicating the rest of the world at a much faster rate and technology is individually personalized and programmed. As international business becomes more prevalent, it seems that younger generations from China are forgoing their more traditional ways to adapt to a more individualistic lifestyle. With this thought, I would like to conclude that neither the collectivist nor individualist approach is better than the other. They are simply different orientations. I believe that an individual's environment, culture, political views, economy, upbringing, and education lend to the development of collectivistic or individualistic traits within someone. In order to maintain positive, beneficial relationships, it is essential for both countries to understand and accept these different approaches in order to lead to a better mutual understanding and become one step closer to handling the multifaceted challenges created by the differences among the U.S. and Chinese culture. Finally, the impact of the media, internet, and industrialization have had a great influence among the younger generations of the Chinese population, which has led to their adoption of more Western ideals and a system that intertwines the collectivist and individualistic values. Now, we cannot rely on single metaphorical distinctions such as individualism or collectivism to accurately describe and ultimately understand other cultures, which calls for a greater understanding, acceptance, and open-mindedness as we become one very interconnected and interacting globalized world.